afternoon. Uh, this presentation is actually uh, uh, prepared by Dr. Takao Inoue, but uh, he's uh, not here this afternoon, so I'll, I'll uh, try to, to present the, the work that we've done together in, uh, in terms of creating a, an, a framework that can be used for radar design and uh, prototyping and, and verification. So uh, <clears throat> what, have, what we've been using is uh, the AWR design environment. This has been the starting point in, in our design process. Uh, in the design AWR, we have uh, a, a framework of tools with uh, including the, our system simulator tool and the, and the circuit sim simulator tool. They, they all work on the same environment, the same database of elements and components and the co-simulation is truly seam uh, seamless, uh, which means that you can, you can be in the same environment. There's no need to import or export system diagrams or system schematics or models, but you just, uh, just point to, you know, from a system level point to a, a uh, schematic. So, uh, uh, so this was the starting point, and uh, VSS, our uh, system simulation tool, has been the, the, the main tool that helped us uh, uh, starting the design of the of uh, radar systems. Uh, in general, VSS can be used for for a, a wide range of applications, including uh, developing component specifications at the very early stages of uh, of your design process. Uh, you can perform RF budget or spur analysis, and uh, you can uh, you know that way you are able to un to understand the impairments of uh, of your RF links by by using uh, reliable models. Uh, you can uh, develop your algorithms using, uh, you know, either uh, script language or graphical uh, interface, and uh, it's a, it's a pretty powerful environment that allows you to perform full uh, simulations of full uh, uh, communication links with modulated signals or or radar signals in this in, in case, and then through our connection to national instruments uh, uh, software and hardware we are capable of performing hardware in loop simulations to, to move our, uh, our design process closer to, to hardware implementations. So uh, as I mentioned, the, the three main uh, tools in VSS that, that uh, make this possible are the are RF budgeting ca capabilities that allow us to perform a wide range of uh, uh, cascaded measurements like uh, gain, input, output, IP, IP3, IP2, noise figure, and so on. The RF inspector is our spur analysis tool that would help you identify the, the heritage of any tones in your, uh, in your uh, results. And then that way, hopefully, you can, uh, you can tweak your design to make sure that uh, unwanted spurs do not occur uh, where, where they should not. And finally, the, the, our time domain simulation would allow us to, to perform a full uh, 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 simulation, time domain simulation, you know, we can push samples in and out of, uh, of, the, of the whole communication system and we can do this for any of the uh, uh, commercial standards or we can do this for, for any proprietary standards or, or radar systems, let's say. And, uh, and as part of this, uh, uh, of this capability, we can seamless, seamlessly uh, co-simulate with our circuit tool, which is Microwave Office, and, and also with uh, LabVIEW or MATLAB, if you have any IP that you've developed on, on uh, MATLAB or, or LabVIEW, you can easily uh, co-simulate with it at the system level. And then uh, one thing that you know, I'd like you to keep in mind is that all these uh, three tools run off of the same system diagram, the same design that you have. You do not have to switch to different tools to perform these capabilities. So. Uh, <coughs> So in terms of the, uh, real briefly, in terms of uh, RF modeling in VSS, we have three levels of, uh, of modeling. We, we can start by uh, using behavioral models, which means that <coughs> we can, we can uh, take the manufacturer's data sheets and, and, and uh, use the, 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 those parameters in our behavioral models. And uh, we account for impedance mismatch, frequency dependency, temperature dependency in these models. So these are, these are a really good uh, first start of, uh, uh, in the design process, and typical uh, elements that fall into these cat categories are amplifiers, filters, mixers, like, uh, et cetera. Then in the, uh, once you've developed your, your uh, uh, component specifications, you can work with your circuit designers and, and, and get a, a circuit implementation of your component. 
in that, uh, in that case, hopefully you use our uh, microwave office tool, but we actually co-simulate with, with, uh, with uh, uh, several tools, at the uh, circuit simulator tools. So uh, what this allows you, uh, you to do is that you can optimize your circuit parameters by using system level measurements. And, and, which, yeah, and you can see immediate feedback. You can perform yield analysis uh, using, again, you can uh, vary uh, the parameters at the circuit level and uh, measure your, your uh, performance at the system level. And finally, uh, when you move down, down the path to, uh, to um, uh, testing real devices, then you can use either lab measurements or manufacturer data and use our uh, file-based models uh, for, for the cost simulation with a system level. So now let's switch gears. Uh, every, everybody here should be familiar with the radar, but, but basically it's a, in theory it's a real simple concept. You, you transmit a signal which is bounced off of a target. It comes back uh, with a certain delay and uh, with certain attenuation. And uh, what you want to do is that you want to make sure that you uh, extract uh, information such as uh, target range or target relative uh, velocity. And to do this, you, you just use the uh, radar equation, uh, this radar equation over here. And the, you know, some of the uh, radar, th the, the common radar types in the, you know, out there are the continuous wave or CW radar, which is just a high frequency unmodulated tone. And uh, it's used for relative velocity, but it cannot provide any range detection. So this is my, like the radar guns that, uh, that, that police would use. Uh, FMCW, it's a frequency modulated CW radar. And it's, uh, it's basically, uh, it, the frequency of the uh, signal is modulated linearly. And uh, you can detect, uh, detect stationary objects and, and measure the range, but it cannot pr uh, provide um, a relative velocity. And finally, you, if you combine, uh, and we can, we can actually have a pulse linear chirp, which is uh, as FMCW with an on and off type of pattern, then, uh, which is also called pulse Doppler, then we can have a, a signal that can, pr can provide uh, range detection and relative, uh, relative velocity uh, measurements. So um, with that in mind, we, you know, uh, FMC, uh, the, the pulse Doppler is the most common uh, radar used in, in a lot of military applications. And, and uh, a radar system would, you know, uh, conceptually, will we'll uh, we'll have a pulse generator. It's going to have a uh, transmitter link. Uh, a circulator that goes into the, an antenna. It's, uh, the signal is broadcast. Uh, we have a target model. The signal is bounced off a target, comes back to a receive antenna, goes through a receiver uh, link, uh, down conversion link, and then there is a, a lot of signal processing that goes, uh, that continues. So uh, what we've done is that we've, we've used our uh, uh, AWR software to do the first level of analysis. But then we've, uh, we've uh, created a framework where we connect with the national instruments, hardware, and software so that we make it easy for users to uh, move uh, further in the, in the design and, and verification and validation phase by including hardware in loop simulations. And for that, uh, we've used the LabVIEW software, which is a really generic uh, graphical programming environment. But most importantly, it provides the instrument control as well as uh, you know, uh, many signal processing algorithms or visualization and graphing. And then on the hardware side, we, we take advantage of the NIPXI hardware, which is really a PC-based uh, instrument and provides connect, uh, connectivity to a lot of RF signal generators and an analyzers. And uh, the NIPXI uh, platform is actually the big, this is one of the, the bigger chassis and uh, it contains three components. It contains the, the big chassis, which, is, uh, which has a, a back panel with a, uh, a, with a, with a high-speed bus. Uh, it contains a controller, which is a, a full-blown uh, Windows computer. Uh, and then uh, the rest are the, the uh, peripheral modules, which you can uh, ch uh, pick and choose. And you can have your signal, gener uh, ch signal, uh, signal generators or analyzers or the the uh, VST, like a vector signal transceiver. So uh, when we go back to the system diagram, what we've done is that we've, you know, throughout the, the different phases of the product development, we've uh, implemented the, you know, the pulse generator. We've done that in LabVIEW and, and or in, uh, in VSS. And then moving on, the, the modeling, 
of the, the transmit, transmitter link was initially done in, in VSS, and then once we had, uh, we had a, a, a good design, then we implemented this in hardware, so we can test this by using real hardware uh, through, the, through the NIPXI. The, uh, the antenna modeling was all done in VSS, and so was done the target model. So the target models that we have in, include, uh, these are dynamic target models that include a lot of the, the RCS with various, uh, with, with the swirling fluctuations. They, they include uh, Doppler offsets and, and, uh, and uh, uh, propagation delay. They, uh, they have antenna patterns that, that we, can, we can use for, for uh, modeling beams that come from, from different directions, such as the line of sight or reflections of the ground or of the, of the, of the uh, 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 sea, if we are in the maritime uh, uh, conditions, or uh, from jammers or, or clutters. So uh, moving down the signal processing path, you know, the, the, down, the, the baseband processing was all done in LabVIEW or in VSS. And then <clears throat> again, the receiver RF link initially was done in VSS in software, and then uh, it was moved into hardware. And uh, uh, in terms of the signal processing, one of the key things there is that it can, this can be very computationally intensive. So <clears throat> we uh, have also taken advantage of the FPGA uh, conversions that uh, uh, NI tools provide. So we can run real-time processing algorithms by running them into large FPG uh, FPGAs and, and be able to test our uh, uh, baseband algorithms or our, uh, let's say, moving target detector algorithms by using controlled, uh, realistic controlled uh, target models and antenna models. So uh, typical analysis that we've done is that we've, as I mentioned, in, um, in VSS, we started with, with the, this is a, a typical RF link, and we started with, uh, with a uh, transmitter link that we analyzed it in VSS. We calculated uh, cascaded measurements, like RF, like budget measurements. Uh, we looked at the spur analysis here, and then once, you know, we got the results that we, we wanted, this was uh, sent off, and, and it was actually packaged, and uh, as you can see, we're, we had a, a Mimic PA that was part of the, the, this design, and we, this Mimic PA was, was uh, actually uh, co-simulated in hardware. Uh, again, we can, we can perform uh, signal processing uh, analysis where we, we look at the, uh, you know, the, the pulse compression using, uh, using the realistic TX and RX links so we can include the, the effect of, uh, of, uh, of real hardware uh, uh, RF components into the uh, signal processing uh, performance. And uh, here's another example where we had, you know, uh, a moving target detector and uh, a CFAR calculator where we had, you know, the targets, uh, dynamic targets, and then we had algorithms that, that track these, these targets uh, so that we would be able to, to provide a, uh, a visualization of, of, the, uh, of, the, envi of the target uh, dynamics that we have uh, modeled. So finally, uh, uh, I want to leave you with the thought that you know, VS, the, the, the AWR VSS design environment is a, a com complete RF simulation uh, pl uh, a platform that provides you know, uh, you know, a pretty good uh, capabilities for modeling all your RF links and, uh, and uh, the radar signals and, uh, and signal processing. Uh, the, which is uh, part of the VSS library, and this can be used actually as a framework for designing and simulation of, of, uh, of your of, uh, uh, radar uh, systems. And finally, we, with the connection to the National Instruments hardware and software, this allows us to move down the, uh, down the path of uh, simulating with hardware, with real hardware, and, and testing our algorithms in, uh, in real hardware. And with that, I will, uh, I will stop and uh, thank you for, for your attention. And if you have any questions, please uh, talk to me here or at the National Instruments booth. Thank you.